Jado. Number four, one five five Jimmy. I'm sorry. Today on the brief. In a clear validation of Pakistan's claims of Indian-sponsored state terrorism, the International Court of Justice on Wednesday rejected the release of self-confessed Indian spy Kulbushan Jadav. This further move to showcase India's efforts of isolating Pakistan has been in a vain. Where do we go from here? Let's get into it. Hello and welcome to The Brief. I'm Jafar Hasnan. The International Court of Justice on Wednesday rejected remedies sought by India, including the annulment of a military court decision convicting Kulbushan Jadav, his release and safe passage to India. The tribunal in The Hague, while finding Jadav guilty of committing terrorist activities inside Pakistan, ordered that the Indian spy cannot be handed over to India. Kulbushan will remain in Pakistan's custody, it ruled. The court did, however, order an, quote, effective review and reconsideration of the conviction and sentence of Kulbushan Sudhir Jadav. The Indian Navy officer was arrested in Pakistan's province of Balochistan in March 2016 on charges of terrorism and spying for India's intelligence agency, the Research and Analysis Wing, or more infamously known as RAW. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan on Thursday appreciated the International Court of Justice verdict to not acquit, release and return Commander Kulbushan Jadav to India. Jadav confessed to fomenting terrorism and engaging in espionage within Pakistan while he was also serving uh, as a commander of Indian Navy. India later knocked at the door of the ICJ which stayed Jadav's execution as its 16-judge bench started its proceedings on the Indian appeal. India, in its plea, had asked the ICJ to direct Pakistan to take steps to annul the military court's decision, release Jadav and to facilitate his safe passage to India. However, the ICJ said that Jadav's conviction and sentence was not violating Article 36 of the Vienna Convention. Thus, the court finds that these submissions made by India cannot be upheld. This is another case of embarrassment for India, whose covert action in destabilizing competition in the South Asian region have finally started to be better known in the international community. So who exactly is this Kulbushan Jadav? Let's find out in this report. Who is Kulbushan Jadav? I am Commander Kulbushan Jadav, number 4155 Julu. I am a serving officer of the Indian Navy. I am from the cadre of engineering department in the Indian Navy. And my cover name was Usain Mubarak Patel, which I had taken for doing some intelligence gathering for the Indian agencies. On March 24, 2016, Pakistani security agencies apprehended an on-duty covert agent from Balochistan. The suspect was said to be an officer of the Indian Navy, working for India's infamous research and analysis wing, better known as RAW, in a mission to destabilize Pakistan. The operative had contacts with banned organizations and was working on plans to break Karachi and Balochistan away from Pakistan and to sabotage the billion-dollar China-Pakistan Economic Corridor project. On March 25th, a day after the arrest, the Indian Ministry of External Affairs said that the Indian man arrested from Balochistan has no connection with the government. However, it did admit that Kulbushan Yadav is a former officer of the Indian Navy. On April 10th, Pakistan's Army Chief, General Kamar Jawed Bajwa, confirmed Jadav's death sentence awarded by the Field General Court Martial. The spy was tried under Pakistan's Army Act and awarded a death sentence. 
He confessed before a magistrate and the court that he was tasked by RAW to plan, coordinate and organize espionage, sabotage activities aiming to destabilize and wage war against Pakistan by impeding the efforts of law enforcement agencies for restoring peace in Balochistan and Karachi. India's infamous intelligence agency, the Research and Analysis Wing, has been accused of conducting cross-border covert activities in Pakistan, specifically state-sponsored terrorism and emboldening separatist armies to cause violence and chaos in Pakistan's western province of Balochistan, a region rich in natural resources and bordering Iran. Just yesterday, on the 17th of July 2019, the International Court of Justice has rejected Indian plea for Jadav's release. And to discuss this further, joining me now from Pakistan is Muneeb Qadir, a renowned Pakistani lawyer, writer and journalist. Muneeb, thank you very much for being with us. The International Criminal Court has rejected all remedies sought by India, which included the annulment of the military court's uh, decision convicting Jadav, restricting Pakistan from executing the sentence, securing yep. Jadav's release and ordering his return to India. However, they did rule uh, that Jadav be granted counselor access. I know there's much debate going on in the media to figure out in whose favor the ruling was. Please tell me what is your navigation through this? See, I think the word is out. Uh, what India was really and truly contending for, the main thing, namely the acquittal, release and return of Kulbushan Jadav. India stands to have failed on its main contention. It has not been granted what it was primarily seeking because to get Kulbushan returned, to have him returned, India will once again, according to this ICT judgment, have to knock at Pakistani court's doors and a new retrial can only be started by and under Pakistan's discretion. That is how I would sum up the ICS judgment. So really, the ball is now in Pakistan's court, and uh, no pun intended at that. Um, uh, the only thing that the ICJ has deferred on are procedural matters, formal matters, namely, you know, the, those pertaining to consular access. Um, other than that, uh, the main substance of the case which has been claimed by the Pakistani side uh, that, you know, Kulbushan Chadav was here with Mela Fadi intentions, he was involved in acts of espionage in breach of international law, and that he was here to commit terror activities. Those uh, grounds or those findings have not been challenged at all by the ICJ. In fact, they have been endorsed by the ICJ because in paragraph 137 of its judgment, the ICJ has categorically stated that nothing under the Pakistani military court's findings has breached any provision of international law, and it is clearly not in violation of Article 36 of the Vienna Convention. So when the ICJ says that the retrial or any review which Pakistan could or, or would undertake is completely and entirely Pakistan's discretion. Not only does the ICJ, by necessary implication, also validate Pakistani military court's findings, but it also demonstrates its absolute faith in Pakistani judicial system and the ability to dispense even-handed justice. So, in effect, this is a huge victory secured by Pakistan via the International Court of Justice, via the World Court, and what it has gotten is a stamp of approval from the ICJ itself, that indeed its claims and its findings are valid and they stand valid until and unless at Pakistan's discretion a retrial happens and until and unless India can discharge a very heavy burden of proof. Yeah, it seems like the ball is in Pakistan's court at the moment. Uh, Muneeb, I believe this question is on a lot of people's mind at the moment. Why did Pakistan not grant counselor access to Jadav in the first place? Is there any credible reasoning behind it? You see, if you look at Mr. Tasaddar Jilani Sahabs, he was the ad hoc judge from the Pakistani side on this ICJ bench. If you look at his dissenting note, he, according to him, and this is something that I also believe in, 
there are certain things which are regulated by customary international law, things which go unsaid, which you do not even have to specify. They are so obvious that you take them for granted. And one of them was that when the Vienna Convention on Consular Relations had been agreed upon, it's a multilateral treaty, they did not spell it out that there was an espionage exception. Uh, because, like I said, such an exception uh, for providing consular access already existed under customary international law. So for that reason, uh, Pakistan felt that these are things which are taken or understood to be present in all situations, and these are exceptional situations, national security concerns, whereby certain derogations can be made. And more interestingly, you know, there was a 2008 agreement between Pakistan and India, again, under which they had agreed that certain matters could be exempted from the scope of Vienna Convention on Consular Relations. Um, you know, there would be certain matters pertaining to national security on which consular access could even be denied, and that would be decided by the state on whose soil such a suspected uh, spy or spy charged with, you know, illegal espionage is present. So Pakistan was exercising the discretion. Nevertheless, it is a procedural matter. It does not paint the findings of the Pakistani court, namely the criminality of Kulbushan Jadav. And that is the main victory which Pakistan has secured. The odds are truly in Pakistan's favor. The rest of the matter, which has been left by the ICJ completely at Pakistan's discretion, are matters pertaining to substantive law, on which Pakistan has very serious grounds to reconfirm its findings of guilt against this person. Now, Manif Jadav was sent to Pakistan with ill intentions to spread terrorism across the country and also to sabotage yes. uh, the CPEC project between India, yes. uh, between Pakistan, China, and the rest of the world. So, what does this tell us about the policy of uh, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi? That's a very good question. Uh, in fact, I just talked about substantive legal grounds on which Pakistan has found this person, Kulbushan Jadav, to have been guilty of espionage and illegal acts of terror. Uh, this is part and parcel of a very wide scheme which has been designed by the Indian establishment, of which even the Indian establishment does not make any secret. Let me tell you that there have been a lot of attacks against Pakistani civilians on Pakistani soil perpetrated by such illegal groups which have received support externally, namely from India, and the likes of Kulbushan Jadav, who have been held to, you know, uh, been involved in criminal terrorist activities, again confirmed by the ICG yesterday, their hands are on this. And these are national security concerns. Let me tell you, even in the United Kingdom, they have a special immigration appeals commission to decide matters, and they can derogate from, you know, strict requirements of fair trial, uh, trial even on that matter. So, considering that Pakistani verdict stands legally valid, we have to look at in look at it in light of facts which have been established by Pakistan again and yet again by the ICJ yesterday. The facts are that this person, um, you know, held a fake passport, which was valid, which was a valid Indian passport. He had traveled on it 17 times. Now, other substantive facts as well, which goes against, uh, which go against India and what the Indian Council has been arguing, um, you know, the fact that there is no evidence of any correspondence having been made between Iran and India. As you know, India has been claiming that Kulbushan was abducted. There is absolutely no evidence to that effect. And then, you know, one major thing, uh, uh, India claims that uh, the, the, he was a retired army navy chief. But my point is that if he was truly retired, why was Kulbushan Jadav's name not published on the Indian official gazette? You know, which is always a must. So there are so many factors which point towards Jadav's criminality and the wider scheme here. Let me tell you, you know, there are a lot of retired generals, Indian generals, who sit on primetime television on Indian media, even Indian television anchors, day and night they keep on supporting illegal separatist movements in Pakistan, which is deemed to be an act of aggression under international law. If you look at General Assembly Resolution 2625, Article 2 of the Union Charter, to intrude into the matters of another country and to, you know, uh, encroach upon the uh, territorial sovereignty of another country, that is deemed to be an act of aggression, strictly prohibited under customary international law and the United Nations Charter. When these kinds of acts are propagated on Indian television. When you've got people like Major General G.D. Bakshi and Gauravaria, very renowned generals, you know, who rule the roost on Indian media, openly supporting organizations 
organizations which have been deemed to be illegal internationally, for example, the BLA, which has been deemed a terrorist organization by the United States of America recently, what does that tell us? They are themselves incriminating Kulbushan Jadav. There's absolutely no room for doubt left. So Kulbushan Jadav's presence on Pakistani soil is a matter of national security, and that you know, allows Pakistan the entitlement to take whatever steps it has to, according to its domestic law, to protect its territorial sovereignty and national security. That is the right of every sovereign nation under international law. So India cannot deny it. Like I said, the maximum it can do is it can only knock at the Pakistani justice system's doors once again. And if once again the Pakistani justice system believes at a form of its own choosing that this person's criminality has been established beyond reasonable doubt, then, you know, there is nothing that can be challenged because the ICJ's final verdict is out. And by final, I mean truly final one which cannot be challenged. And so, you know, in popular Indian media, they are celebrating it as victory. I really do not understand where is the victory part? I Manip, do not Manip, see since that. you mentioned Indian media, let me ask you, how do you feel about the Indian media glorifying a recognized terrorist, Kulbushan Yadav? You know, I've been saying, and you know, the same has been uh, tweeted by our DGISPR as well, and Shami Mutkweshi Saab as well. Yesterday's judgment coming from the ICJ is a clear endorsement of the Pakistani courts finding that this person is a terrorist, thereby making Kulbushan Jadav an internationally designated, a UN organ designated criminal and terrorist. Now, when I see the Indian media claiming him to be a hero, and a victim that really beggars belief. And any dissent on that matter is strictly prohibited on Indian media. I mean, I keep on getting invited on Indian media a lot. And when I uh, give my analysis as objectively as I can, the way I am right now, they just shut their guest down. And not just a Pakistani guest, even from within India. If someone raises doubts as to whether the ICJ's verdict yesterday was truly a victory, they are labeled as traitors. Just today, I was watching it on Republic TV, again, a very renowned television channel in India, uh, which propagates the ruling BJP party's point of view all the time. Uh, th that channel was highlighting that, you know, Shashi Tharoor, a very well-known figure in India from the Congress party, when he said, that India has not really secured a complete victory on the matter because India again has to have recourse to the Pakistani judicial system to secure the release of Kulbushan Jadav. Republic TV labeled Shashi Tharoor a traitor. They labeled him as a person who is in alliance with Pakistan when he is only giving his objective analysis on a legal matter. So it is really alarming, not only that, you know, from within Pakistan and from Pakistani guests, all the dissenting voices that come onto the channel are shouted down, but even from within their country, any kind of plurality of view or any diversity of view is not only just not encouraged, it is actively discouraged. That is truly alarming. Indeed. Muneeb Kader, thank you very much for talking to us on The Brief. Thank you very much for having me. Now let's take a look at what the Pakistani Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi said. I feel extreme satisfaction in saying that Commander Yadav shall remain in Pakistan. He shall be treated in accordance with the laws of Pakistan. And this is a victory for Pakistan. In their verdict, the ICJ has said that Commander Yadav has been given the right of review and reconsideration. But the point that is worth considering is that they have qualified this right by saying that it should be done through means of Pakistan's choosing. This is a very important point, that Pakistan will decide. This is an acknowledgement of our courts, our laws, our sovereignty, and they have admitted it. The point to ponder over is this. Did Commander Yadav not have the right to review under our laws? He had. Everyone knows that he had that right. The decision which the military court gave, he could have appealed against that. But he didn't. Welcome back. And joining me now to discuss this further from Pakistan is Nadia Naki, a broadcast journalist for News One TV. Nadia, thank you very much for being with us. Let me start by asking you, 
what the, the foreign minister of Pakistan has made it very clear that Pakistan will be following the rule of law after the verdict was out from the International Court of Justice. So uh, what has been the atmosphere across Pakistan after it was announced? How are people within Pakistan reacting to it? Well, everyone appreciates the decision of uh, ICJ. And uh, Pakistan, you know, when it comes uh, uh, about India, the hostility that both the countries share, both the nuclear power share, and whatever has happened in January after the Pulwama attack, uh, naturally, we were very sure that, you know, we had enough evidence. This case has been on for about more than two years, uh, rather two years and two months. And I would say that the people of Pakistan were really celebrating. It was more than like winning a World Cup, because, you see, when it comes to terrorism, uh, in the international uh, community, I would say that India has always been pressurizing, saying that Pakistan is a country that sponsors, you know, there has been state-sponsored uh, terrorism uh, across the border from our side. Now, this time, it has been, um, you know, very outly open uh, when you take the case of uh, Kulbushan Yadev, that he had been involved in all sorts of um, terrorist activities, um, unrest in Pakistan, and uh, we had been saying that India has been sponsoring terrorism to create unrest in Pakistan, to destabilize Pakistan. So Pakistanis are very happy. Um, across the board, even in all the political parties, apart from all the differences, you know, they hailed the decision. They said that when it comes to, you know, our national spirit, when it comes to national security, when it comes to terrorism, we are all one. It also furthers our foreign policy, I would say, because uh, Pakistan has been trying to say on the international front that there has been a genocide in Kashmir. And um, it has been happening from India's side. So now I would say that India will have to have a very different posture in the international arena. Um, you know, a neighbor uh, where you catch a spy, a serving Navy commander, you take the case into the international court saying that he should be released, he should be repatriated, he should be acquitted, all have been rejected. So I would say that it's a very win-win situation for Pakistan. Indeed. Now, Nadia, disputing and contradictory reports are flowing in from the Indian side. India claims that Jadav was kidnapped from Iran. So why didn't they appeal it to the Iranian authorities? Uh, you mean, uh, why didn't India, um, uh, India appeal to the Iranians? Oh, well, that's, uh, that is something that Pakistan has been saying, that if you, know, if you feel that um, Kulbushan Yadev had been abducted, they should have appealed to Iran. They should have found out. In fact, Pakistan had written a letter also uh, to India, and India had never replied on that once we had caught Kulbushan Yadev. Um, so I think India is very weak on its stance. They could never prove the passport either. So I think India is on the losing side. They should have done what, whatever they are now demanding, they should have done earlier. And now the time has passed. Relationship between India and Pakistan has has been quite strained, especially since uh, February of 2019. However, at the same time the Jadav case is taking place, Pakistan has also successfully convicted Hafiz Saeed, someone who India has accused of being responsible for the Mumbai attack. So, do you think that might be something that might bridge the gap between Pakistan and India at this point? I would say it is already bridging the gap. And, you know, um, when, when we say that we have arrested Hafiz Saeed, who India claims to be the mastermind of Mumbai attacks, one thing that we are very clear, Pakistan has uh, shown um, the international community that when it comes to terrorism, Pakistan and the present government is very, very serious. We have been fighting terrorism. The army has been fighting terrorism. So even if it's going to come on our national, if we find, as the prime minister says, that he or she or anybody who is a non-state actor has been involved in any sort of uh, you know, terrorist activities, we are going to take those people to task. As far as I would say that um, you know, there has been a melting of ice, I would say, between India and Pakistan, not only because of the arrest of Hafiz Saeed, it should work with us, with, with both the sides. Also, you would, um, you would know that you know, we are opening the Qatarpur border very soon. And Pakistan and India, India, Pakistan has al always said, and the, you know, the prime minister has always been saying that, you know, we should, there's no other solution to our problems than to have a dialogue. And this time we feel that India is ready for a dialogue. So um, we hope for the best. I mean, uh, we shouldn't be holding what has happened in case of Kulbushan Yadev. All right, Nadia. Now, coming to my last question, given the latest developments, 
how do you think uh, the verdict of ICJ will impact the relationship between India and Pakistan in the long term? I would say that, you know, um, there has been talks about how this is going to proceed now, because you do understand that ICJ has said that, you know, we are to provide counselor access and we, we, we should review the decision. Pakistan has been saying it. The foreign minister has said it, that everything is going to uh, take place according to the law of the land. And we are going to give the full chance, uh, you know, let the law takes its recourse. I, I would say that, you know, it's very difficult to predict the relation between India and Pakistan, that what it is going to be like in the future. The only thing that we should hope now that uh, our prime minister is ready to talk to the Indian government, to talk over the issues that uh, both the countries have been sharing. And it's time that if uh, both, us, both the countries can come to talks, can solve the issues that have been pending for years, it actually adds up to the peace of the region. And we, we, we're just going to uh, hope that sense is going to prevail and India is not going to hold these talks or any relation back just because on the basis of losing on pollution yade. Let's hope for the best. Nadia Naki, thank you very much for talking to us on A News. Thank you. The Indian media has been on a campaign of misinformation to malign Pakistan for ages now. However, those efforts have once again proved in vain with the recent ruling by the International Court of Justice. It highlighted that not only does this case fall within Pakistan's jurisdiction, but that it is even accepted by the ICJ that Jadav's claims of being kidnapped in Iran while on business were also baseless. After all, if he was indeed kidnapped in Iran, why hasn't the Iranian government validated his story? In fact, why hasn't Iran taken up, uh, taken up the issue with a cross-border kidnapping from their sovereign territory? Just another case of misleading the public, just as the Indian government did when it claimed it shot down a Pakistani F-16, which they could never prove, and that claim was refuted by the U.S. They also claimed that Trump is not meeting Khan during his maiden trip, but that claim has also been proven wrong time and time again. India is beginning to seem more like the boy who cried wolf, but it looks like the international community has caught on to its lies and the same old ploy just won't work anymore. India's state of sponsored terrorism is finally out in the open with nowhere to hide. I'm Jafar Hasnan. See you next week.